Hey everyone, it's Chantel. Today we're here with Summer and we're gonna go over all the gear that you need for your new boat. Summer works here at Active Water Sports with me and you also have a podcast. I do, yeah. This year we started a podcast with Active Water Sports and myself where I get to sit down with industry leaders from around the world wake legends, professional riders, all across the board and get to know them a little bit better as well as share their story with you guys. It's called Summer Lunch Break. It launched this year. There's a few episodes out. You should check it out. She also works in our pro shop. So she has a list of gear and items that she recommends that you, that you outfit your boat with before you get started on the water. Summer's list is broken into three parts. There's things that you have to have to be legal on the water, items that we recommend, and things that are just fun. Toys, extras, goodies that you might want when you're on the water. Our state, we live in Oregon, so we're gonna go over what you need to be legal on the water here in Oregon. Make sure you know what your state's requirements are before you hit the water, just to make sure that you have everything you need. When you buy a boat from Active Water Sports, we supply you with the things that you need to pass the safety inspection here in Oregon. First thing you need on that list is gonna be a vest kit. These are four adult-sized CGA life jackets. You're not ever really gonna wear them, but they're good to have on board in case you end up with more passengers than you expected. Everybody on board is required to have a CGA life jacket. The next things on that list is gonna be a throw cushion, a skier down flag, and a fire extinguisher. So that's everything you need to be legal. And next we're gonna go over a list of the things we highly recommend. You should really have these on your boat um, before you go out. You guys are definitely gonna to wanna to make sure you have some fenders on your boat, whether you're tying up to a dock or another boat out on the water. These guys have been super popular this year, so they're definitely a great thing to have. These particular fenders are really nice because they're a soft foam, so they aren't going to roll or scratch up your boat. Uh, they also have a hole right here so you can get to your cleat even when they're attached so you can tie it up to the dock. Um, dock lines, really anything. I love those bungee ones. We've been out of stock for a while, but keep checking because we will get those back in. Uh, but you definitely can never have too much rope on the boat. So I would just stock up on fender lines, dock lines, anything like that. Next up, we recommend getting an anchor for your boat. At AWS, we do recommend doing the large box anchor. Boats are getting bigger, so your anchor should too. Anchor Buddy, this is a bungee anchor line, so you can throw it out and use it with a shore spike um, to really get your boat off of the, uh, off of the shore when you anchor it. Uh, so this is a really good option. If you want a longer line, you could get a 100 or 200 foot line and that would work well with the box anchor too. You just bought a brand new boat, so making sure it looks brand new is really important. Interior and exterior cleaners are gonna make sure that it's sparkly and looking good on the water. So there's two different types of vests. You have your Coast Guard approved and your non-Coast Guard approved. This guy isn't gonna provide as much flotation as that one will. I like to tell people that with a vest like this, the water's gonna hit you right at your chin. With a Coast Guard approved vest, your shoulder should be dry. The nice thing about this, if you're not as comfortable as a swimmer, you definitely wanna be wearing a Coast Guard approved vest. These are nice because they give you much more range of motion, but may not be legal in your state. Definitely check your requirements. Either way, you're gonna to have to have enough Coast Guard approved vests for everybody in the boat. That's, I think, nationwide, every state requires that. So you'll probably want some of these anyway, but maybe a nice backup if you're surfing or want more range of motion. For vests, it's really important that you actually bring everybody into the shop, try them all on. Every brand has a different fit, different cut. Everybody's body is different. So finding one that fits you and is comfortable for you is, is key. So get your whole crew in there, try on vests, and make sure you get one that fits you the way you want it to. So here I have the Liquid Force Primo. This board's awesome because it's a Duracell technology, so it's nice and heavy duty for lots of people on the boat. The board's getting passed around. Not gonna worry about damaging it as much as some of our higher end boards. What's great about the Primo is that it's a hybrid style surfer. So whether you like surf style, skim style, or you're not really sure yet, this board is gonna help you figure it out. This is the kind of board that you'll just always keep on your boat. You can throw it to anybody. Anybody can ride it, get up on it. This is just a great boat board. Here I have the Liquid Force Space Pod. This is a more advanced higher end board from performance to materials that go into it. 
You spend a little bit more, but you get a little bit more out of it. While it is a classic surf style, it's great for anybody behind the boat, and it's definitely a good next option after you guys have got your bearings. If you guys plan on wakeboarding behind your boat, which you should, true, <laughs> we do recommend getting a board that's gonna be really versatile and work for everybody on board, for the most part. So what we recommend with that is going with something that's a progressive three-stage rocker like the classic here, as well as an open-toed binding that allows for a range of foot sizes to get in and go have fun behind the boat. The classic is great. It's been around for a lot of years. It's definitely a great board for beginners, but somebody who's more advanced is going to get out there and still have a great time on this board. So this is a good, well-rounded. Uh, if you're a great wakeboarder or you want to get into something more advanced, there are a ton of options. Definitely go into your local shop and have them walk you through what the different options are and you can find something that would be a good fit. Now let's talk about my favorite thing, skiing. I know nobody really does this anymore, but it seriously is so, so fun. Combo skis are really inexpensive. This would be a great addition for a boat. It's gonna be easy to teach a beginner because they have a bar here that will attach the skis so they're not just gonna So this is really easy to teach a beginner. Slalom skiing, super fun. Great for a boat that has a little bit smaller weight, but you can still get behind any boat and just kind of tool around on a slalom ski. Um, this is the Radar Senate. The women's version is the Lyric. These are probably our most popular slalom ski that we sell. Um, it's really forgiving. It's great if you want to ski high performance in a course, if you just want to get out and free ski, or if the water's a little bit rough. Um, so definitely check out some skis if you go to your shop. Once you get all your boards and skis and everything like that, you're going to want to get ropes for each sport. All of the ropes do different things, so I would try to get a different rope for each sport that you're going to be doing. So here we got our wakeboard line. This goes anywhere from 60 to 80 feet behind the boat, so you can determine where you want to ride at. Nice big handle on this guy, so big hands, little hands, everybody can use it. It's pre-stretched, so there's no bungee to it, exactly what you want in a wakeboard rope. We also have our surf rope here, which is a 25 foot bungee rope that you want to have a lot of give as you fall in and out of the wave while you're learning to throw it off to the side. Then the ski rope, this you do want some stretch with. As you're cutting across the wake, you do want to kind of have a little bit of stretch in it. So it's a little bit thicker rope that has some give, different than that wakeboard line. This is 75 feet, but it's adjustable. So as you get better, you can shorten it up opposite of a wakeboard rope where when you're beginning, you want it shorter and then you make it longer as you grow. So those are really the big three, our most popular sports, but there are a ton of ways to get on the water and have fun. Yeah, we carry knee boards, zuck boards, paddle boards, all things that you can use out on the water to have a good time. We also have tubes, but <laughs> your kids will never want to do anything else <laughs> if you get a tube. So that's our list of recommended items, things that you definitely need to have on your boat when you before you get out on the water. And if you made it this far, we do have a coupon code for you on the screen. So get 10% off at activewake.com on anything we talked about or anything else you find that you like. And then Summer's gonna tell us where you can find your podcast. So you can find the Summer Lunch Break podcast on our YouTube channel, Summer Lunch Break, on Active Wake's blog, or on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and Anchor Podcasts. Hope to see you guys there. Thanks so much, we'll see you on the water.